everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today, we're going to be talking about the body and our electric body, electric health. And we have um, Eileen McCoustic here talking about her book. So um, welcome, Eileen. We had, we had you on a while ago talking about tuning forks. I ran out afterwards, bought a tuning fork, and it really did work. I had a, like a little pain, and I remember working with it um, a long time ago. I want, and, and it seems like this is an area that you've really been deep diving in for a while. And I think the world is now caught up with you, um, but we still don't know exactly what we're doing. <laughs> but, you know, people talk about energy, vibration, frequency. Um, now you're talking about voltage. Um, help us discern, like, th and this is an area where you've actually really been diving into. Um, help us, like, kind of, I guess, cl get clarity on what all these things are and what they mean. Yeah, well, I've been using tuning forks for 25 years now, and it's really only in the last couple of years that more and more people have gotten hip to the idea of sound healing. People are experiencing sound baths and gongs and bowls and just a lot more of it. So that when I say I do sound healing, I don't get dismissed. Like I've never heard of sound <laughs> healing. <laughs> people have heard of it, which is great. Uh, sometimes it's hard being way ahead of the curve of everybody else. And um, my playing with sound, with tuning forks as a practitioner, as a practitioner with a very busy practice, um, just made, turned me into kind of a scientist. Mm -hmm. And I, it was a lot of observation and experimentation and seeing what would happen if I tried this or I use this fork in this way. I played with a lot of different frequencies, both weighted and unweighted. And what using the forks ultimately revealed to me is that our bodies have an electrical system in its entirety that we never learn about. Mm -hmm. And that it's this electrical system that's actually the most primary part of who we are. Um, and, you know, we kind of kind of get that we're electrical, but it's really a classic case of missing the forest for the trees. Because a lot of people understand that their heart is electrical. Like if your heart loses its ability to regulate itself, you get a pacemaker and a pacemaker, it delivers electric current to your heart. And so your heart is an electrically driven oscillator. A lot of people realize their brain waves are electric. If you get an EEG and it tells you like what frequency your brain waves are are resonating in. Um, our blood carries a charge, right? And there's information coming out more recently that our collagen network and all of our fascia conducts electricity and that our cells need a certain amount of charge across their cell membrane in order to do all their little cell things that they need to do. And if the voltage drops below a certain level in our system, then entropy sets in and the body starts to fall apart because it doesn't have enough juice running to keep all operations moving smoothly. Mm -hmm. And so when we get pain anywhere, for example, it's usually a sign that there's too much current running through those wires. We've got inflammation, we've got a buildup or an imbalance of electrical charge in our system. So any place where we end up with an excess, it creates a deficiency somewhere else. Mm -hmm. this, this is very often tension and holding. It's related to our patterns of our thoughts and our feelings because our thoughts are electrical. Our feelings are electrical. They're all vibrational patterns and waves that flow through us, through our body's electrical system. And I've come to see the electrical system actually, it's kind of an interesting structure. It's, it is a torus. So that's essentially, it's a sphere with a spiral channel down the middle. And we have a North pole and a South pole and electricity circulates through our electric body and also through our magnetic field. So wait, wait, let's actually stop there because it's a lot of information. So I want to go back into, because I've heard of things like the microcosmic orbit where you talk about energy that runs to the North and South poles. And then you mentioned there's um, this kind of spiral thing through our body. And then there is a toroidal field that goes. And my understanding from a book sense is that there's energy that comes from above, goes down and circulates in a toroid, why simultaneously there's energy from up 
above that below from the earth that's coming and circulating so there's tell us all about the let's break it down into the microcosmic orbit that happens this toroidal field in the center field because i don't i've heard about those things i don't quite understand how the energy currents work and what the purposes is of those currents are can we start from there before you go yeah absolutely on? well so the surface of the the earth is negatively charged mm -hmm. and our atmosphere and the sun is more of a net positive mm -hmm. charge so for example um a relationship between a bee and a flower a bee is flying around in the atmosphere and it's positively charged a flower is connected to the earth and it's negatively charged and we know that there's an electromagnetic relationship between the bee and the flower that it's drawn that way right so so our circulating electrical system this kind of continual current of flow that's moving through us we are drawing the negative current from the surface of the earth up we're drawing the positive current from the atmosphere and the sun down now maybe some people have seen the image the vedic image of the ida and the pingala the you two snakes that yeah. circulate right and that's also the image for a lot of medical things the the staff of hermes with the two snakes the caduceus. yeah yeah the caduceus i'm not i never know yeah. yeah. <laughs> um and so we see the symbolism of this fundamental structure of life represented in a lot of different ways. Um, and so that's what it is. Those snakes represent the positive and negative electrical currents in your body. So the so the so the um, toroidal energy is the positive energy coming down and getting grounded, while at the same time the negative energy from the earth is coming, and they're kind of they're attracted to each other and going in a circle okay and yeah. then in addition to the there's a eta and pingali that are kind of circulating this way through your body which is um from the buddhist standpoint they think about it as the red and white channels one is female one is is male is that also a positive and a negative charge or yeah it's the same thing it's not in addition to they're just different symbols of representation of this you know natural experience that we're having in fact the barber pole the red and white spiraling barber pole is a visual representation the red being um the feminine the negative and the white being the positive or the masculine okay god so this there's this whole energy system within us this kind of cir circulating serpentine within us and then there's this kind of why 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 do you think there are these two different energy systems and how is that also different the, is the toroidal the same thing as the microcosmic orbit that they talk about going in the front and the back or is that a third energy system you know i'm not super familiar i mean i've read about the microcosmic orbit um some years ago and honestly that was before my under coming to understand the electrical system. So CJ, I would really have to go back and, and re-familiarize myself with that material in order to give you a good answer sure, to that. Sure, no problem. But what, what about these other two? What is what is the intent or purpose? I understand that they're one is like positive and negative. They're trying to they're they're attracted to each other and they're meant to go in a flow. Um, and when we have the flow, um, things actually when we actually have tension in our body, like you were just mentioning, that actually is like, you know, creating like, oh, a muscle tension because there's something that's not in the flow. That's what I yeah. understand so far. Yeah, but exactly. Are there, two, are there two, are there, are there, is there a specific intent and purpose to the two different systems that we've talked about so far? Well, I think it's just the way these things structure in nature. Uh, the movie Thrive talks a lot about the shape of the toroid and how it's mm -hmm. fractal, kind of like at every level of scale, even down to the level of like an atom or a molecule and kind of going up from that, that, um, that anything that has an electric current running through it has a magnetic field around it. And the toroid is the magnetic field. It's this whole system of electric current flow and magnetic field. Okay. And, and in science, we've, we've learned that magnetic fields guide and inform electric currents. 
Okay, so okay. what is going on in a magnetic field is actually, even as we look out in space, we see that there's all these invisible magnetic fields that are guiding and shaping the way electricity is flowing, you know, through the heavens. Um, so what is, what I have found by combing vibrating forks through the magnetic field of the body is that if there's inflammation in a shoulder, say, and someone has pain in their shoulder, I'm going to find a greater density of magnetic charge over where there's a greater concentration of electric charge. And so what we do with tuning forks is we manipulate the body's electrical system at the level of the magnetic field. So, uh, okay, got it. Yeah. So a tuning fork produces a weak electromagnetic charge and it becomes like a magnetic stylus. And so I can actually come in and find where the electromagnetic energy is kind of bunched. I can use a tuning fork to actually click into it like a magnet and like drag and drop it into the central channel of the body, which moves the electricity that's there in back into circulation into this kind of pattern here like this exactly. powder knows what to do but you need to actually get it back into the central nervous of uh, the shishumna is what they call it in the... yeah okay interesting so um so when you're actually getting the tuning fork is it that it's a felt experience like you can actually feel it vibrating like you can actually feel the fork vibrating at a different it felt expression that's how you know yeah that's a really good way to phrase it yes in fact what i i started training my sons when they were six and nine how to do this work. <laughs> i haven't trained any students yet and i had chronic mid back pain like really bad chronic mid back pain and so i started teaching my husband wouldn't have anything to do in the forest, but I'm like you the little ones come here and so so i started training them and they were like mom it's really subtle. And I was like, yes, it is. But if you learn to pay attention to and understand subtle things, women will love you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is good that you're learning this. Right. Um, but my son described it when he was six as when the fork hits an area where there's more charge, that it gets more vibrating. Mm. And that's really what happens. You feel it sort of resonating with that little pocket of energy. It sort of amplifies the vibration of the fork and you can feel it and you can actually hear the changes in the sound. In fact, you know, I've trained thousands of students at this point, CJ, and there's a very fundamental language of tuning forks that's really similar to music. Mm -hmm. So like one of the things I've discovered is that whenever we feel a sad feeling, we generate a particular waveform mm. that feeling, right? And so whenever we feel that feeling, that waveform gets stored, okay? Because what I found is that our body's electrical system is actually where all our memories are. Mm. And if you think about this, like everything that we experience, everything we see, smell, taste, touch, feel is all an electrical impulse in the mm. body. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that all of our memories are stored in our body's electrical system. Mm. And that's exactly what I've found, that our memories are actually stored in standing waves within our biofield, within our magnetic field. Interesting. So if I actually have, you know, so let's say that at six years old, I'm in, an, in a major bike accident and it wrecks up, I don't know, I have like a scar on my face. Okay, so that's actually something that torments me. It's hard for me to ride a bike. It's hard for me to try anything new. Okay. So all of a sudden you're going and you actually may feel in the biofield of that person, a memory of that bike biking incident, and you can actually heal the kind of stored memory or trauma by dragging it and going back to the center channel. Is that how yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much how it works. What I've done is I've actually mapped the field. I've discovered it has a very specific anatomy and physiology. So if somebody is 60, okay, the field extends about six feet around us. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is 60, I'm going to find memories that were generated as waveforms because we put words on everything, but really it's all waves. I'm going to find the waveforms that were generated when you were 30, about three feet away from you. So I'm going to find that memory from when you were six, around five feet plus away. Oh, so it goes actually outward. So the yeah, older like memories here. go outwards. Interesting. Yeah. 
So as we generate the memories, they move away from us. So the outer edge of the field is gestation, birth. And then as we move in, it's kind of like dropping a needle on an album and reading the vibrational record of somebody's life. And so in places where you have big trauma, like a big bike accident, the fork's going to hit that area and it's going to stick there because there's gonna be resistance. And if you had a lot of pain, it might go really sharp. If you got really scared afterwards, I'm gonna find a pulsing quality after that. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna find that. And I'm in being able to read the memory, right? And being able to find it. And uh, then I reflect back to the body and the body's organizing intelligence how it sounds. So, you know, when you look in the mirror and you see a poppy seed in your teeth, like, what do you yeah. do? You yeah. know, immediately you're like, oh, I need to fix that. That's not right. right. It's the same way when the body hears its own dissonance or distortion from some kind of stress or trauma, it's like, wow, I didn't know it sounded that bad over there. And it will use the input from the tuning fork. The tuning fork becomes like a metronome that helps the body find a new rhythm. It becomes like a mirror so that it can see and feel and sense its own tension, right? Because what do you have in your body? You have tension from that accident. And it's this, right, even if it's deeply subconscious that fear or whatever, or, or the injury. So when the, that tension is creating the distortion and distortion is creating the tension. So the body starts to modulate the tension so that it can hear itself sound better. Okay. So I think I just, let me make sure I understand you. So like you ding, you know, you have a little tuning for and depending on how far it is, you can kind of have a, a, a kind of a map on how old the, the actual memory is. And it goes out to how far? Six feet, you said, or five feet? About six feet. In most six people. feet. Okay, so it goes six feet out. So you almost can actually figure out a map. And even the way it vibrates, you can tell if it's an emotional or physical trauma that occurred. And, and is the, when you were talking about the body, so the body, the ear then hears a, oh, I hear that too. Like you feel it and you bring it, do you bring it to my attention or just when you, when you're just like, oh, I feel something at six years old and you're vibrating it, the, the body goes, wait, I hear that. Oh, and then you <laughs> drag and, and drop it in. Like what? I don't understand. That's the part I don't understand. So you, it out, you hear six years old. Oh, it's an emotional thing. And tell me what the body does with this kind of vibrational well, piece. So when I, basically it activates that memory. So sometimes if it's a really sad memory, you know how they can like open the top of your skull and poke a part of your brain and it make your arm do that. Yes, no, I didn't. That's horrifying, but I get it. And I believe it's true. Yeah. I don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> it's the same idea that I'm going to, I'm pouring through your memory banks and I'm finding these, you know, these stuck, still vulnerable, traumatized places that are still held in a trauma. And if it's really sad, it's like poking that memory and it can really evoke that feeling. Like, uh, you know, I, I make people cry a lot, um, but in biofield tuning, we always say better out than in because it's these areas of resistance that are held in our electromagnetic system that are inhibiting flow, that are lowering our overall voltage, that are making us still scared to get on a bicycle. You know, things where we still have charge in those memories, there is literally electromagnetic energy tied up in the record of those memories. So the first part is to just, is diagnostic. You know, I'm, whoop, I'm around six years old. It sounds kind of like you got bashed up. Does that make you think of anything? You're like, oh yeah, yeah I had a really bad bike accident when I was yeah. sick. I'm like, okay, well, let's just hang out here and reflect back to the body, how it sounds. And so what happens is, as the body hears itself and the 24 keeps coming in, it starts to relax more and more. So the waveforms of that memory that are holding the, that electromagnetic energy, in a kind of a tangle, resolve down into a more coherent expression. And then the energy that's been trapped in that pattern sort of decouples. And so the fork, which originally hit resistance, once the noise resolves, the resistance lets go. And then the fork acts like a broom, you know, or a magnet where you just kind of take that energy and you guide it back into circulation. Are you physically guiding it or the fork itself, the noise goes, no, oh, you actually guide it. You, oh, you, you move your hand. Come along and then you like, whoop, drop it in. Wow, and, fascinating. Yeah. 
And then it's like, and then if an energy center, you know, if some part of us has been underpowered, you know, we talk about how chakras get blocked. Well, the where it's blocked is out in your field and you can, you can release the block from the field and restore that flow so that all of a sudden that energy center is moving a lot better. And people just come more creative, they become uh, more energetic, they get unblocked, they become less emotional, their fuses get longer, like all kinds of stuff. Okay, so let's go back to this. And I actually didn't have a trauma, so I don't know why I'm thinking about this <laughs> six-year-old thing, but let's go there anyway. <laughs> so we go there and then all of a sudden you're holding out and I'm like, whoa, start crying. And you're like, good, that's you. <laughs> actually, you're like, hey, think about your six-year-old memory. And I'm just sitting there thinking I'm doing like, like Eileen's doing this tuning thing. I'm like, whoa, start crying. And then, <laughs> and then something kind of um, like it got, it gets unpackaged, whatever got tangled up becomes unpackaged and then whoop goes in, you, you sweep it in. <laughs> now yeah. your channel can deal with this, boom gets and I assume it's getting reintegrated that energy that was like out there getting all who knows what what all caught up in that scenario gets kind of in, reintegrated into our body and what is the reintegration process like you know if you sweep in a whole bunch of stuff in there does it is it like no more I can only integrate so much what's the integration process and how do you work with that um that's a great question so you know, it's, it's really shifting your patterns. We're just collections of patterns, you know, habitual thoughts, habitual feelings, a lot of stuff that get laid down under the age of three that we don't even remember. We form beliefs, we form responses in response to our environment. So much of who we think we are and the reactions that we have are a consequence of those precognitive experiences. So, um, so it, it fundamentally shifts the pattern of who we think we are. Like I, I look at it as sort of alchemizing our pain body and turning that shit from our past, which is like compost or fuel, right? right? So it's like sitting out here, like a uh, heavy old, you know, your baggage yeah. or whatever. But when we bring it into the central channel, it alchemizes back into light and back into flow and our own electric potential. Like our, you know, we all have the potential to be amazing human beings. Something I've learned every single person I've worked on. I'm like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're so brilliant. You're so gifted. You're so amazing. And you're stuck all in your pain body and all of these old experiences and false beliefs and self-limiting stories and emotions you've never expressed and tears you've never cried. And you're like carrying around this right. whole heavy burden of your past, right. which is, and that I'll tell you what, the heavier your burden, the more trauma you have the more you can alchemize that and really realize like the superhero that you are. Like, we don't have to be victims of our experiences because we have this ability to transmute them, to digest them, to integrate them so that we get the benefit, right? Because adversity breeds strength. Like we don't want to sit around and have an easy life or we don't have to work and we don't have to do anything because then we just become blobby and useless. Mm -hmm. So there's, I see real advantages in people who have actually had a lot of trauma as they start to transmute it because they get themselves back. They've had to go through their lives with all these burdens of trauma that's made them strong, right? And so then you start to integrate all that and get all these bits of your own spark back. And, and you can become very liberated from these past experiences. Like we don't erase them. You know, your memory is going to stay there, but the way it's stored, the way your body re references it changes. It's sort of like defragmenting a hard drive, you know? Okay, so, it, and so here's my, my, my question because of a, someone who like tries to do too much in too little time, I would be like, okay, just do like a full day of this, Eileen. <laughs> Well, CJ, I want you. Like, <laughs> go all the way from like age six all the way till now. Just yeah. make it all happen. Like, what, <laughs> what, is, what is the limit of like how much can the body digest, and how do you know when it's digested too much? Well, you know, the, the every time like sponges have a certain absorption capacity, right? And like you can't absorb anymore. And so in my early days of my practice, sometimes I'd work for two hours or more on people. And I would just all of a sudden I'd hit a spot where I just knew the body was saturated or I knew it didn't, it couldn't take anymore, where it wouldn't be able to integrate anymore. 
Right, because sometimes the integration process can be uncomfortable because sometimes as we, we sort of dig up this stuff out of your memory banks, there's physical, like the issues are in the tissues as well. And so, so you know, you might have had all this sadness or anger, you know, maybe all this anger that you've been repressing. And I kind of come in and dig it up. I'm like, wow, you know, look at all this anger you've been repressing. <laughs> <laughs> let's get that back into circulation right. next day you're like ah! <laughs> as it's all kind of off gassing i'm mad at you eileen what have you done to me <laughs> okay guys so that could be a kind of thing because you're trying yeah. to integrate all the stuff that was out here now inside and so yeah. like a sponge there's kind of a limit and that as a practitioner you have a felt sense or does it body give you a sense like you're done like yeah, it, I just have a felt sense. Like you, okay. you learn to say, because I'll tell you what, the work is very much about paying attention to your senses, right? Like I'm not psychic. I'm, I'm just paying really close attention to what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling in my fingertips, what I'm seeing in your body, what I'm observing with your breath. And, and I'm just listening deeply. And that information is all encoded in your field, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, all your memories are there. The tuning fork just, it's kind of like an invisible ink decoder. I'm like, whoa, what's, what's this memory out here that sounds so funny, you know? Interesting. So we all are giving off vibes all the time. We all know that we give off right. vibes, right? I mean, it's really our primary language of communication. And so what is it? I have a quick question too, also be, um, the map. Okay. You're talking about the map goes this way since you've actually, what other territory have you mapped? Meaning are there certain kind of emotional issues that reside on the right, left, like female issues, like what else is in the territory that you've discovered? Yeah. So there's, there's a very fascinating anatomy and physiology of the fields. In fact, I sell the biofield anatomy map at, at store, and it's also in both my books in uh, tuning the human biofield and electric body, electric health, the map is there. In fact, in electric body, electric health, the whole second half of the book is a breakdown of the map. And all what I observed through thousands of clients, like everybody who's coming in to see me with left shoulder issues has all of this sadness weighing on them that they're not expressing. Everybody who's coming into me with right hip issues is like way too busy in their mind and their body. And they're like way out of balance. Like their electrical system has gone pitched to the right, especially by the hip. And, and electricity that's supposed to be running through the physiology, supporting order and structure and function has now like gone akimbo is 18 inches off the right hip because you can't stop thinking about all the things you have to do. <laughs> I see. I see how you're reading me as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have a right hip issue and I think too much. So I see I'm also getting a personal reading, which I'm very happy about. I don't know about my left shoulder. I'm like, no, no, I don't know. Who knows? Um, but so I see. So you're basically, um, there is a map. So if you actually buy the book, you can actually see the map. And so actually it sounds like certain kind of physio physical problems that I bring, you can actually see it or hear, feel it in the map. That is so cool. So you've actually yeah. mapped this territory of what yeah. goes where, because you know, a, a long time ago, there was a book where, um, and I can't remember who the name of the woman was, Louise Hayes, where she would say like, okay, if you have a back problem, it has to do, you know, it was a very rudimentary kind of, if you feel it here, it relates to this, that, or this. In this particular case, it's almost you're finding the tuning fork and, and finding in the, it sounds like in the astral realm, where this thing astral body you're finding it where it is in the astral body and you're and you're mapping an astral map of what's happening is that fair i to mean say? i i don't know that i would use the term astral it's electromagnetic okay you know, it, it's electromagnetic like you have electric current you have a magnetic field you have standing waves we see evidence of of information stored on standing waves all over the place i mean it, it's just it's a logical model that fits in with other similar types of models Right. And what we understand about electricity. So I would say that there's subtle aspects of electromagnetism that we maybe don't understand that are maybe more addressed in when we're talking about chi, for example, or, you know, but chi or key is really electricity. It's the bioelectricity of the body. 
it's right. just recognized it's more subtle aspects are recognized you know from that perspective whereas from our western perspective we're kind of like oh biofield it may or may not exist you know which is nonsense it does <laughs> like right. we have like current we have a magnetic field like that's all there is to it and we can we can find the memories in the magnetic field so there's other things too you know where you go imbalanced in your mind or your emotions but there's also features called the ancestral rivers that run about 10 inches off either side of our body and if i stick a fork in the ancestral river on the left side of your body i'm going to hear the tonal information contained in the dna information that you got from your mother's lineage oh wow yeah. Interesting. And, wow. Yeah. And we inherit tonal tendencies, right? We think of DNA as being chemistry and it determines your eye color and hair color and that and diseases you get. But really it's like flowing music. It's a song, you know? And and if you're if you your mother and her mother before you had depression, like if there was that mm, of depression in that energetic stream of information that you're part of it's very likely that you're going to inherit that tone, mm. that tonal tendency. Mm, interesting. So we all have a vibrational energy as well from our ancestral past that you can actually feel in the field. And how about, I mean, can when you actually tune into the field, does it go even further than that? I mean, if you talk to the Buddhists and they talk about Dzogchen, it goes all the way out to the earth and the planets. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if you've gone that far at that level or if that's mapped in your book as well yeah i mean i well, nothing exists in island and nothing exists in isolation and so what i found is that you know we have this six foot tours but then there are just layers and layers and layers of like larger tourists that we're part of or expanded aspects of ourselves. you know it's a it's about the question um i think i wish i could remember the story about uh somebody saying about what is the earth rest on right then the native americans are like rest on the back of a turtle well what's that on it's on another turtle right it's turtles all the way down that's a metaphor for tauruses it's tauruses like all the way out taurus is within tour or tori however you say it within 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 so i ventured beyond six feet i mean i've gone out 50 feet i've gone worked outside and like come in and hit different membranes and different layers mm -hmm. i hit information that people have related to past lives in the sort of extended biofield um so there's there's all kinds of stuff out there, you know. And that would be in your book as well. You can read the second part of your book where the map is, and that would yeah. actually be there. And if people want to actually, oh, I want to take a course. I'd like to learn more. Um, you teach classes. It sounds like there's a book, of course, that you can read. What's the difference between the book and the classes, and what are the different offerings? Can can people who can't come visit you in Vermont, like, can they can they actually do an online version? Tell us a little bit more about if people who are interested what they do next. Sure. Well, we used to pre 2020 fly teachers all over the world. We have a two part training system. Um, that's one course and then you practice and then you come back and take another course. You learn some more. And so um, in 2020, we put the first part of the training online. And in 2021, we created and just launched the second part of the training. So we wow. can now have students from all around the world in the comfort of their own home. The courses are a combination of video learning, live interaction with uh, teachers in a virtual classroom, one-on-one -on -one instruction. Um, so you really get to learn the whole method and uh, you don't have to come to Vermont. So we're really excited. I didn't think it was possible to teach it online. And I have an incredible teaching team who put together just a really extraordinary high quality program um, and it's surprisingly easy to learn at home so it's a great thing to incorporate into any other kind of practice we have a lot of people we have all kinds of people massage therapists reiki practitioners other sound healers but also doctors nurses psychiatrists coaches um, chiropractors you know a very wide array of people because you can incorporate this method into virtually any other practice. Would I have to, have to physically be next to the person to feel the field? Or is that something that um, I could be online and be like, mm, like clearly you're doing it online because like, you're picking up stuff on my right hip. But is it something <laughs> that you are doing? Um, you, it sounds like you can do virtually. Is that 
Yeah, we can. And I, you know, I didn't think that was possible either until somebody convinced me to try it. And I discovered that all the information in the field shows up on a treatment table, even if you're not there. Just with my intention, be like, okay, CJ's on my table and I can start reading your field and adjusting your field at a distance. So in fact, we did a study recently where we had 15 volunteers who all came in with clinical anxiety and they each received one biofield tuning session a week for three weeks virtually. And by the end of the study, nobody had clinical anxiety anymore. <laughs> they didn't even have to come into the club. Did they just they didn't did have to come in? <laughs> I'll do no therapy matter. on you. You don't have to drive anywhere. You just like pay me and I'm and I'm done. <laughs> That's yeah. the best ever. Okay, so we have been talking to Eileen um, um, Makuski and we were talking about her the book, Electric Body, Electric Health. Thank you so much for being on the show. You bet, CJ. Thanks for having me.